So here we have some triangles, an equilateral triangle where all sides are of equal length. And this is denoted by the lines here. An isosceles triangle where two sides have equal length. A scalene triangle where all the sides have different lengths. And a right angle triangle. Now, irrespective of what type of triangle it is, all the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180. So for this equilateral triangle, all of the angles, all of the interior angles will add up to 180 degrees. Of this isosceles triangle, all of the interior angles will add up to 180 degrees. The same thing for the scalene triangle, all of the interior angles will add up to 180 degrees. And for this right angle triangle as well, all of the interior angles will add up to 180 degrees. An equilateral triangle has two properties. All sides are equal, so all sides are of equal length. And all of the interior angles are equal, and they are 60 degrees. So all of the interior angles of an equilateral triangle will always be 60 degrees. Why? Well, think about it. We know that all of the interior angles of any triangle must add up to 180. Now, if I know that all of the sides are equal and all of the angles are equal, then what's 180 divided by 3? 180 exactly equally divided by 3 is equal to 60. Therefore, each of the angles in an equilateral triangle will all be 60 degrees. And this is something that you must remember. An isosceles triangle has two properties. It has two equal sides, so these two sides here are equal, and this is implied by the lines we draw here, that these two sides are of equal length. And it also has two equal angles. These two angles are equal. Now let's take an example. Suppose this angle was 80 degrees. So this angle was 80 degrees. Now, if this angle is 80 degrees, then this angle must be also be 80 degrees if this is an isosceles. So this angle also has to be 80 degrees. Now, what is the remaining angle that we have here? Well, the remaining angle that we have here, we can work that out. How? Well, we know that all of the angles add up to 180 degrees because all the interior angles of any triangle add up to 180 80 degrees. And by subtracting these two from 180 degrees, we can work out the remaining angle. So let's do this. So we have 180 minus these two. Now what's 80 at 80? That's 160, so I will subtract 160 from this. And the remaining angle is 0 take away 0 is 0, 8 take away 6 is 2. 1 take away 1 is 0, so the remaining angle is 20 degrees. Now let's take another example. Suppose we are given this angle here as 70 degrees. What are these angles here? Well, we can work this out. We know that all of the angles must add up to 180 degrees. We can subtract this one from 180 degrees and work out the remaining angle. So let's do this. So if I do 180 minus the 70 degrees, I'm left with 110. Now, what does this mean? Does this mean that each of these angles are 110 degrees. I mean, we know that in an isosceles triangle, these two angles are equal. So does this mean that these two angles are 110 degrees each? 
Well, clearly not, because if these two angles were 110 degrees each, the interior angles would all exceed 180 degrees, because if this one was 110, and this one was 110, and this is 70, that all adds up to 220, 290, which exceeds 180 degrees. So these two cannot each be 110 degrees. The sum of these two is 110 degrees. I know that these two are equal, so the sum of these two is 110 degrees. So to work out what each of them are, I need to divide this amount by 2. I need to halve this amount. So 110 divided by 2 is 55. So each of these angles are 55 degrees each. So here we have a question where a parallelogram is made up of two identical isosceles triangles. So these two isosceles triangles are identical. We are being asked to work out angle Y, angle Y over here. Now, how do we work this out? Well, if this is an isosceles triangle, then I know that this angle here must also be 80 degrees. Now, I have these two angles. How can I work out this angle here? Well, I know that in a triangle, all of the angles add up to 180 degrees. So all I need to do, I, I can subtract these two from 180 degrees to work out the remaining angle here. So 180 minus these two angles, the sum of these two angles. So 80 at 80 is 160, so we subtract 160, and 180 minus 160 is clearly 20. So the remaining angle here is 20 degrees. Now, we have been told that this parallelogram is made of two identical isosceles triangle. So this isosceles triangle here is identical to this isosceles triangle here. So this means that the angles are also identical. So this means that this angle here and that angle there must be 80 degrees each. And angle Y has to be the same as this angle there. Because you, you can clearly see that this isosceles triangle is just the same as this isosceles triangle, it's just been inverted. So this angle there, angle Y, has to be the same as this angle there. So angle Y is clearly 20 degrees. So Y equals 20 degrees, and we're done. In a scalene triangle, all sides are unequal and all angles are un unequal. So all of these sides are different in length, they are unequal, and all of the interior angles are unequal. So all of these interior angles are different from one another. Now let's take an example. Suppose they tell us that this angle here is, let's say, 64 degrees, and this angle there is let's say 72 degrees. The question is, what is the remaining angle? So the remaining angle here, we can work this out by subtracting these two from 180. Now I know that all of the interior angles of any triangle add up to 180 degrees, so I can subtract these two from 180 degrees to work out the remaining angle. So let's do this. So first of all, add these two angles together so you can easily subtract the sum of these angles from 180 to work this angle out. So let's add these two up together first. So 72 plus 64 is equal to 2 add 4 is 6, 7 add 6 is 13. So that's 136. Then what we do we subtract 136 from 180. So 180 minus 136 
is equal to 0 take base 6, we can't do that, so we borrow from the 8, the 8 becomes a 7, the 0 becomes a 10. 10 take away 6 is 4, 7 take away 3 is 4, and 1 take away 1 is 0. So the remaining angle here is 44 degrees. A right angle triangle has one 90 degree angle, and the 90 degree angle is generally denoted by this square symbol here. Whenever you see the square symbol, you must immediately assume that the angle is 90 degrees. Now, suppose we have an example of where they give you an, a right angle triangle where one of the angles is given as 69 degrees, and they ask you to work out this one here. How would we work this out? Well, we know that this angle is 69 degrees, we know that this angle is 90 degrees, we can just subtract these two angles from 180 degrees to work out the remaining angle, because we know that all of the interior angles of any triangle add up to 180, so let's do this. So, 180 minus these two here. Now, if I take away these two here, the, f the easy way to do this is just sum these two first. Let's add them up first and then take it away from 180. So, what's 69 add 90? Well, 69 add 90... 0 at 9 is 9, 6 at 9 is 15. So that's 159. And then we subtract this 159 from 180. So 180 minus 159, 0 take away 9, we cannot do that. We need to borrow from the 8, that becomes a 7, and that becomes a 10 now. So 10 take away 9 is 1, 7 take away 5 is 2, 1 take away 1 is 0. So the remaining angle, this one here, is 21 degrees. In this question here, we are being asked to work out the exterior angle of this triangle. We have been given one of the interior angles of this triangle, and we are being asked to work out the exterior angle. Now the first thing you should realise is that this is an isosceles triangle. Why is this an isosceles triangle? Because of these lines here, which denotes that these two sides are equal. Now, if this is an isosceles triangle and these two sides are equal, this means that these two interior angles are identical. Now, how can we work out these two interior angles? Is that, well, I know that all of the interior angles in a triangle add up to 180, I can just subtract the 50 degrees from 180 to work out the remaining two triangles. So let's do this. 180 minus the 50 from here. 180 minus 50 is equal to 130. Now, 130 is the sum of these two interior angles. And because these two interior angles are equal, they are identical, I can work out what each of these angles are by just dividing 130 by 2. So, 130 divided by 2 is equal to 65. So, this means that these two interior angles are 65 degrees each. Now that I have these interior angles, I can work out the exterior angle B. How? Well, do you notice that this angle, this interior angle, and this exterior angle makes a semicircle? Here, I clearly have a semicircle here. Now, you should know that in a full circle there are 360 degrees. In 
a semicircle in half of a circle, there are 180 degrees. So this semicircle here must add up to 180 degrees. Now, it is made up of two pieces. If one piece is 65 degrees, then the remaining piece, the exterior angle B, the part B, can be worked out by subtracting 65 degrees from 180. So, 180 minus the 65 degrees, I am subtracting this piece here, we can work out the exterior angle B. Now, 0 take, take away 5, I can't do this, I'm, I must borrow from the 8, the 8 becomes a 7, the 0 becomes a 10, 10 take away 5 is 5, 7 take away 6 is 1, and we just bring the 1 down. So, the angle B, the exterior angle, is 115 degrees, and we are done. So here we are being asked to work out the interior the sum of the interior angles of this irregular hexagon. So the sum of these interior angles. Now, why is this called an irregular hexagon? This is an irregular hexagon because all of the sides are not equal. As you can see, this side is shorter than this side here. In a regular hexagon, all of the sides will be equal and all of the interior angles will also be equal. So how would I answer this question? All you need to do is pick any corner. You can pick any of these corners. Now I will pick this corner. Now from this corner, start drawing lines to other corners and forming triangles. So from this corner here, I will start drawing lines to other corners to form some triangles. Now, as you can see here, the maximum number of triangles I can form from this corner is four triangles. Now, what you have to do is you remember that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Now, how many triangles do I have here? I have 1, 2, 3, 4 triangles. Now, if I know that the sum of the interior angles of one triangle adds up to 180, I can work out the sum of all of these interior angles of this irregular hexagon by multiplying the 180 by 4, because I have 4 triangles here. So, 180 times 4, 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 8 is 32, I carry the 3 there, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. So the sum of the interior angles of this irregular hexagon is 700 and 20 degrees. So what we are saying is that these interior angles add up to 720 degrees.